Rubber! Come here! You want a free picture of the hawk? Who doesn't? I'll give it to you for free, brother! Completely free! Can you believe it, brother? The hawk says your luck is in today! All you've got to do is watch these 10 Garrett Bischoff matches! And then I'll send your picture right over to you! Don't forget, brother, to also complete this form! It's simple! All we need is your personal details, address, phone number, credit card number. Brother, I promise you, these Garrett Bischoff matches are personally endorsed by the Hawk. If you watch these videos, train like the Hawk and Garrett and say your prayers and eat your vitamins, I promise you a 60% improvement in your life. All right, shove it squad. Let's talk about three letters that we don't normally mention on this channel. These three letters are G, F, W, and they stand for Global Fast Wrestling, because that's what it was, a complete embarrassment and a waste of time. Shout out to ATI87 on Patreon, who requested this video. If you want to request future videos, all you need to do is sign up on Patreon and declare your allegiance to Hawkamania. I promise it will change your life forever. It all started out as most wonderful things do in life. It was December 2013. Snow was in the air, presents were under the tree, and the bromans were putting us all to sleep with their boring ass matches. Jeff Jarrett wasn't having such a glorious time however, as he had just resigned from TNA, and reality was starting to set in that he'd never get his company back from Dixie Carter. In all seriousness, things were bad for TNA. All their stars were leaving. Hogan and AJ Styles had both just left, and there would be a lot more following them out the doors in the new year. Reports were saying that although Jeff Jarrett had resigned from TNA, he was still an investor in the company. Jarrett was the founder of TNA, but he had to bring in Dixie Carter as the owner because they were struggling financially back in the early days. You have to think that Jeff Jarrett was always keen to try and get his company back that he originally founded. So it's quite sad for Jeff Jarrett really when you look at it. Then things took a strange turn. Jarrett became a two-time founder as he announced his new wrestling company in the spring of 2014, Global Force Wrestling, and then nothing happened. We kept hearing the hype. They were planning on running shows every week of the year. They had all these amazing partnerships with New Japan and AAA. GFW was going to be the next big thing in wrestling, and Jeff Jarrett predicted that we were due a wrestling boom. Some people truly believed it. Others, who didn't spend their time sniffing paint cans and watching bromance matches, were not as easily convinced. Nine months went by and nothing, and then it was announced that GFW would be partnering with New Japan to present the show for American audiences for Wrestle Kingdom 9. They went all out for the presentation and even brought in JR on commentary. The show got a buy rate of around 15,000 in the US. Don't get too excited, shove it squad. It's all downhill from here. All show, no substance, just like a Pac-Man Jones match. It was announced that GFW signed some guys like Gallows and the Young Bucks but they would be non-exclusive and they would carry on working in whatever companies they wanted to. Because GFW had no TV deal, these signings were essentially pointless, and all it meant was that we could expect to see these guys at some point. A lot of the GFW roster ended up signed by WWE or Impact eventually. For something that was mentioned in the same sentence as a wrestling boom, Jarrett Shaw didn't make many changes from the TNA product. They even had a six-sided ring. June 12th, 2015 was the day of the first GFW show in a minor league baseball stadium in front of a whopping crowd of 400 people. They continued to run small time shows in baseball stadiums in front of bad attendances and the wrestling boom was looking very doubtful. TV tapings finally took place in July 2015, over a year after the company was founded. The shows were taped in Vegas and the shows would be called GFW Amped. It all seemed to be kicking into gear quite nicely. One problem though, no TV deal. Jarrett would beg stations for the next few months to air his GFW shows and agreements were eventually reached, but the shows never aired. I guess because no one wants to watch wrestling events that took place six months ago. Everyone had already read about it on the internet and had made their own judgments and assumptions. So that wrestling boom's going well for you then Jarrett. Watching GFW Amped back, it felt pretty similar to CNA. It had some similar belts like the global title, ugh, not that again. Although completely different belt by the way, just with the same name. And this belt was going to be like their world title. They also had the next gen title, which I guess is for the undercard guys. And they also had a women's title and tag team titles. Several TNA wrestlers would also appear on the GFW events. 
Let's face it, the GFW wrestlers did not have enough star power on their own, so Jarrett had to borrow TNA talent. Bobby Roode was talking about the invasion, but people would only get to see the TNA side of what happened. Several wrestlers would also prove to be a problem, because by the time GFW was getting close to achieving a TV deal, wrestlers had signed TV exclusive contracts elsewhere. GFW missed the boat. Anyway, the GFW AMP shows didn't air like I said earlier, but some of the footage made it onto TNA One Night Only events in 2017. So it sounds like a complete fail then, and it's over. Well, no, there was a little bit more to this story. And unfortunately, this wrestling brand actually made it onto TV. Impact TV, that is. Ugh. Jarrett suddenly turned back up in TNA, or Impact as it was now called, in June to compete in a TNA King of the Mountain match with the brand new King of the Mountain title on the line. This title isn't actually brand new and it was the former Legends slash Global slash TV title. And of course Jarrett won the match because he's the King of the Mountain. This led to Jarrett constantly promoting GFW on TNA TV, a show which didn't even have a TV deal so it's rubbish. Dixie made Jeff an authority figure in TNA, and this caused Jarrett to vacate his belt. Jarrett then turned heel, and a power struggle storyline started. Because TNA must have a power struggle storyline every year. I wish I was making this up. Dixie literally battled MVP over control of the company a year earlier. Like my last video said, worst owner of a wrestling company of all time. So what was in it for Impact having Jarrett promote his GFW brand on their TV? Well, rumours are that Jarrett still had some shares in TNA, and he gave these up in order to shell his GFW brand on their TV show. He wanted a little bit of promotion. Well, congratulations, Jarrett. You managed to promote a bunch of skinny WWE cast-offs who were never going to make it in the main event. Jarrett would bring in his invading GFW faction on the show that he became an authority figure. The invasion was spearheaded by PJ Black, the former WWE tag champion known as Justin Gabriel. Wow! The Alliance had Stone Cold, Kurt Angle and Booker T. The NWO had Hawk Hogan, Nash and Scott Hall. And GFW has PJ Black. The invasion was a complete waste of time and no one wanted to see any of these guys. They even won the titles with Trevor Lee and Kurt Hawkins winning the tag belts and PJ Black winning the King of the Mountain title. These titles were held for one week, although the tapings technically took place the next day, giving them all one day title reigns. What losers! GFW also had to resort to having Eric Young join them and turn heel because they didn't have enough star power on their own brand. Eventually it all culminated in a lethal lockdown match with the ownership of TNA on the line. GFW would lose this match and Dixie would win her company back again. Isn't this like the third time this has happened to her? <sighs> Jeff Jarrett then left the screens but he'd returned to Impact again in 2017 as head of creative and announced that TNA and GFW were being merged after Impact Wrestling owners Anthem announced they had acquired GFW. I would love to know how much that deal was going to be worth. Impact then changed their name to GFW. For the love of God, it hadn't been long since they changed their name from TNA to Impact. Now they're changing it again? It then went quiet for a long time. Nothing aired and the 16 episodes of GFW Amped were not aired. During this time, Jeff Jarrett left Impact and ended up in a legal battle with Anthem over the rights to the GFW name and the tape library. Apparently the deal hadn't actually been completed in the first place and Jarrett still owned the rights to the GFW name. Jarrett had given the GFW Amp tapes to Anthem who then erased them because they had run out of space on their servers. What amateurs? How can you run out of space to store your videos? I have way more than 16 videos that I've recorded and kept on my hard drive. Why couldn't these guys just go out and get a hard drive? Were they that hard up? In the legal battle, Jeff Jarrett said that he valued the GFW Amped tapes at $5 million. <laughs> I'll have some of what he's smoking. Jarrett did not want Impact to make any money off the GFW name. Anthem then had to make some changes, including changing their app and changing the show back from GFW to Impact after only three months of having this name. If you visited GlobalForceWrestling.com in 2017, you were greeted by an advert saying that for a free photo of Jeff Jarrett, you can fill in some forms with your personal information and you would also be given help on how to save money on gold and make some earnings like Jeff Jarrett does. Then there's a video of Jeff Jarrett promoting the scheme and a private YouTube video that is essentially a pyramid scheme. So things were so bad in 2016-2017 that Jarrett had to resort to this. If you visit the site today, the advert is now gone. Probably because Double J is in the WWE Hall of Fame. But wow, what a way to end an already terrible wrestling promotion. Jarrett proved for the second time in his life that you need money to make a wrestling promotion work. 
From now to the end of time, the letters of GFW will always stand for Global Fast Wrestling. And if you don't agree with that, then shove it. I'm the Hawk. And what you gonna do, brother, when Hawkmania?